Now, let us see how this uh, magnetic material can be modeled, okay, in terms of uh, electrical circuit. Let me tell you one thing. Here, maybe many of us might have gone through control systems. In control systems, mechanical systems, mechanical systems, force voltage methodology, force current methodology like that, like, you know, if mass is there or moment of inertia is there, it will be converted into inductance and like you know friction will be converted into resistance okay so point here is spring constant will be converted into capacitance like that so point here is very simple we are not mechanical engineers okay we are electrical engineers but if i want to analyze mechanical systems what i will do i will uh, what do you say search for a bridge between mechanical to electrical okay in the sense mechanical systems if we know how to convert that mechanical system in terms of electrical terminology means it's almost we can do our mechanical systems also analysis can be done similarly magnetic system okay basically in all of our machines magnetic system matters okay because all of our machines will work on the magnetic field only so this particular magnetic system if i can convert into electrical analogous system so once it is converted like you know we can apply our network theory like kcl kvl mesh nodal theorems or whatever it may be such that means we will be able to equally analyze magnetic systems but one thing we have to understand the difference between magnetic and electric okay for example if you think of electrical circuit here okay in this electrical circuit resistance okay means the main uh, what do you say difference between electrical and magnetic is for example this is going to be power absorbing element okay so power absorbing element means it will absorb electrical power it will convert into non-electrical power okay it will absorb power but if you think of here this is inductance okay so inductance is not going to be like you know power uh, absorbing element but it's going to be power storage element okay so means that that is the difference like you know here magnetic system will not absorb power is going to be power storage element or means energy can be stored but here electrical power will be absorbed and it will be converted into non-electrical form just keep that point in mind remaining is going to be simple see here if i can convert this magnetic circuit into analogous electrical circuit okay so we have to name them now now which is forming closed paths here current is forming closed paths okay so which is forming closed paths here my operating flux is forming closed paths so let me think of here in the analogous circuit which is as pi okay now which is uh, creating current here voltage which is opposing current here resistance now what is the main source of operating flux here is going to be mmf we can say because without current and number of turns flux will not come so the magnitude of flux depends upon current and number of turns also so this is going to be let me call it as mmf now that mmf equal to number of turns into current okay and see here, see here which is objecting current which is trying to stop current is going to be resistance which is trying to object the operating flux okay in the magnetic material is called as reluctance okay now if i see here resistance equal to voltage by current in the same way reluctance is going to be mmf divided by flux here voltage multiplied by uh, sorry voltage divided by current and here mmf divided by flux so is going to be mmf divided by flux is going to be ni by pi okay now what is resistance in our electrical conductor rho l by a okay what is this rho here electrical resistivity which is objecting property and length of current path area of cross section of current path or if i can convert this objectivity into allowing property that is going to be conductivity one by sigma is going to be divided by into l by a okay similarly here this resistance is going to be okay here one by sigma sigma is going to be allowing property for the current here allowing property is going to be permeability so that is going to be one by mu okay length of current path area of cross section of current path here length of flux path length of flux path area of cross section of flux path in the sense for example if this is the limb if this is the limb this is going to be area of cross section of the core okay so if this is the limb this is going to be area of cross section of the core similarly this is going to be length of flux path divided by area of cross section of flux path okay so actually one thing i'll tell you 
we need not remember this formula at all. Why? Because we cannot forget rho L by A. Okay. So the moment you cannot forget rho L by A, in the sense 1 by sigma L by A, in the place of sigma allowing property mu will come and this mu is nothing but mu naught mu R. Okay. So mu R is going to be relative permeability of the material and mu naught is going to be permeability of the free space. But anyway, means 1 by sigma L by A, 1 by mu L by A. Okay. Now, let us see, as we discussed, my resistance is going to be power absorbing element and inductance here is going to be power storage element. So, how much is the power sto uh, energy stored? For example, energy stored in inductor equal to half L i square. Now, we need not uh, remember any separate formula. Directly we are going to enter into gate problems now immediately. So then I will uh, tell you how to derive any other formula which is required in, the, in your examination. Basically our uh, thing is very simple. We don't remember multiple formulas. We don't remember uh, many things. But from the actual half L I square nobody can forget. So from there only we will derive in solving the gate questions. And one more thing is how much is inductance is going to be n pi by i. Okay. So if you can remember these two things you need not remember anything more. Directly we are going to solve gate questions now. Thank you.